Hello everyone, tudo bom gente? Welcome to this Q&A, I'm very excited to be here with you today. Let me know if you guys can see me and hear me well. Um, I already see some of you here, tudo bom Jacob? Wilderson, Edgar, tudo bom gente? Okay, so uh, if you're new to my channel, I'm Virginia and I publish a new lesson on YouTube every Tuesday and every Thursday. I host this live Q&A. Let me just bring the microphone closer. Okay. And uh, so today we are going to talk about the last lesson that I published last Tuesday. If you have not watched the lesson yet, I recommend you do. It is available on my YouTube channel. It is about padarias, Brazilian bakeries. <laughs> we love, Brazilians love padarias. And they are different from other bakeries, of course. They, are, they have very specific uh, food that we commonly eat in Brazil. Tudo bom? Charles, Sierra, tudo bom? Ótimo, muito bom. So guys, uh, as you guys know, like preparing all these videos is a lot of work. Uh, if you want to show your support to my channel, I would like to invite you to join the new program that I created. It is called uh, YouTube Club, Speaking Brazilian YouTube Club. In this program, you have access to the transcript and translation of all my videos. And also, uh, and also access to a place where you can ask questions and recommend and suggest new videos. Uh, it is a very affordable program. You can try it for one week for free and then it costs $3.99 a month. So this is a very simple way that you could um, support this channel. And you'll find this on my website, okay, speakingbrazilian.com. I have one sad news for you guys. I just uh, last Saturday, my you my Instagram account was disabled. I don't know what happened. Uh, Instagram just deleted my account out of nowhere. I don't know. I have no idea how to get it back. <laughs> so if you follow me on Instagram, I just want you to know that I did not block you. It was just. It was Instagram who blocked me. <laughs> and uh, so I'm trying to contact them without success. I hope I can get my account back, but I'm not sure if that's gonna happen. I just wanted to let you guys know. <laughs> okay, guys, so let's talk about the last lesson. We talked about padarias, padarias. Uh, I, would like, I would love to know who have been to a padaria, a Brazilian bakery. Have you ever been to a Brazilian bakery? Because even if you have never been to Brazil, there are many Brazilian bakeries around the world. I know that in the US there are many bakeries. I have never been in a Brazilian bakery in the US, but I know there are many. Uh, so I'm curious to know if you guys have been to a Brazilian bakery. Uh, okay, I already have a good question here from Margus. Qual palavra é melhor usar sobre comida? Experimentar ou provar? Both verbs are used for food. Okay, you could use experimentar ou provar. Uh, so these two verbs, they are synonyms. Okay, uh, you should not use tentar. So be careful because we have in Portuguese, I know this is confusing guys, we have uh, four verbs in Portuguese that have the same meaning when you translate into English. So the verb try in English, uh, can, in Portuguese, can be experimentar, provar, tentar. There is another verb. I don't remember the other one. <laughs> so they all mean try, right? But when you use, um, when you're talking about food, you can either say provar comida, to try a food, or experimentar comida, okay? Uh, both verbs are correct. They have exactly the same meaning for food. Both verbs work. But if you're talking about uh, an action to try to do something that you are not sure you'll be able to do, then you should use verb tentar, which also means to try, but it's used like when you say, I want to try to do this. Uh, eu vou tentar fazer isso. Then it's verb tentar. Okay, very good questions. Uh, Jacob is saying, tem uma padaria brasileira por perto, estou em Toronto. Oh, you should go there, Jacob, and try it. 
Bom dia, Brad. Okay, guys, do you have any other questions? I'm going, I would like to review with you some vocabulary, useful vocabulary that you could use in a Brazilian bakery, in a padaria. So what is the most important product in uma padaria? <laughs> so how do you say bread in Portuguese? This is tricky, not the word, but the pronunciation of the word. Let's practice that. Let me know how do you write bread in Portuguese. And I want you to practice how to say this word because it is very important that you pronounce it correctly. Otherwise, you could have a different um, uh, meaning. Uh, good question. If food looks good, can you say parece gostoso? Yes, gostoso or gostosa. Yes, you could say parece. Parece gostoso, parece gostosa. So here you have to agree the gender of the word, the noun. So gostoso, if it is a masculine food, <laughs> and gostosa, if it is a feminine food. As you know, in Portuguese, uh, everything has a gender. So food, they have also a gender. So for instance, pão, which is the answer to the question that I asked before. Pão, bread, is a masculine word. So you would say, parece gostoso. It looks good. Parece gostoso. There are other ways to say that as well. In the video, I use another expression. I say, uh, tá com uma cara boa. It has a good face, if you translate word by word. <laughs> tá com uma cara boa. It means it looks good. Mm -hmm. It looks good. Parece gostoso. Very good question. Okay, so pão. Let's talk about the word pão. Pão. You see, there is this nasal sound and it is a dif diphthong. What is a diphthong? When you find two vowels together in the same syllable, you have a diphthong. And in Portuguese, we do pronounce both vowels. It is very important to pronounce the two vowels. So it's not pão. It's pão. Two vowels. Pão. The A is very nasal. Uh, and then the O is very close. It sounds like a weak U. Uh, pão. Pão. We usually speak fast, but we do pronounce both vowels. So that's very important. Okay? And it is important to make the nasal sound because if you say Pau. The, the meaning is different. It means like a wooden stick and it could have a sexual connotation. So be careful with that. <laughs> so be careful. Pay attention to the nasal sound. Oh, pão. Pão. Nasal. It, 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 should it should feel a vibration on your nose when you pronounce nasal sounds. Uh, um, pão. 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 Okay, did you repeat after me? That's important, guys. Whenever I'm teaching pronunciation, you should repeat after me to practice, okay? Okay, I see that you guys have some question. Uh, okay, so John, I talk about this in my mini course uh, of pronunciation. It is a free course available on my website. So I recommend you take this course. But to answer, to answer your question uh, shortly, the D is pronounced like G, uh, before the vowels E and E, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm mixing Portuguese and English, before the vowels E and I, so G, but before the vowel E, it's only at the end of words, or for instance, in a short one syllable word as the preposition G, so it's pronounced like G, only at the end of words, but the DI is always pronounced like G, so this is the short answer. Uh, the it also varies a little bit depending on the accent. So some places in Brazil, some people would just say de or di, not g. So it varies depending on the accent, but the most common pronunciation in the big cities, Sao Paulo, Rio, Brasilia, is g, g. Okay, before e and i, uh, before e only at the end of words. Uh... Uma meia com leite. Uh, so, Ruth, we have in Sao Paulo, we have this phrase, media, me, not meia, media, media com leite. It means coffee with milk. Uh, cafezinho, when you use the word cafezinho, it means little coffee. When you use the word cafezinho in Brazil, it usually means a black coffee, a black coffee. And it, we call it cafezinho because in Brazil, we usually have uh, coffee in small mugs. 
the Magia con Leite usually is a medium mug. Uh, in Brazil, we don't have big, big coffees as we have in the US. <laughs> when, I, when I arrived here, when I got here, I was impressed with the size of the coffees here. In Brazil, it is always small, like an espresso, espresso size a coffee. That's why we call it cafezinho. So it's like a coffee, a black coffee in a small mug, a small cup. And media con leite is usually a medium cup with coffee and milk. Muito bom. Uh, qual é a diferença entre buscar e levar quando você está na padaria, in the sense of picking up? So buscar it usually means to, to pick up something um, and uh, levar means to take something. So when you are in a padaria, if you want to ask something to, for take out, you could say, ah, eu quero isso para levar, to take. Or there is also a very common phrase is para viagem, for travel, <laughs> para viagem. So when, if, you, if you are in a restaurant, if you want to take something, with you, uh, uh, you should ask for viagem, para viagem, or para levar. And buscar is to pick up. So you're not at the bakery at the moment, you're calling on the phone and you want something to pick up, then you could say, eu vou buscar, or pegar. Pegar e buscar could be used in this sense. And levar uh, is to take. I hope I answered your question, Brad. Very good questions, guys. Estou fazendo pão de queijo em casa. Wow, staff! Good luck! Boa sorte com seu pão de queijo. Muito bom. I'm confused by nasal vowels that, when written, don't have any accent marks. Uh, okay, so nasal sounds in Portuguese, they either have a nasal, uh, the accent mark, it is called the tilde, that little thing on top of the vowel. Um, usually the A and the um, O have this tilde on top of it. The other vowels that you don't, don't have, don't, don't take this uh, graphic accent. Uh, but the vowels are also nasalized when followed by the letters M or N. Okay, especially in the same syllable. If they are in different syllables, it varies a little bit. It's not, they are not always nasalized. It depends a little bit on the accent. But if you find a vowel and the letter M right after it in the same, in the same syllable, the vowel is nasalized, okay? It's nasal. So the M and the N makes the vowel that came before it nasal, okay? Okay, guys, looking for more questions. Uh, <laughs> I have no idea, Pedro. Quanto paulista gasta com pão todos os dias? I don't know. <laughs> Very good question. Uh, no Nordeste falam de, não é? Well, it depends, Juan, because the North, Brazilian Northeast is huge. Uh, so it really depends on the place. There is, I know that in Recife, they say D, D. But in my, I'm from Piauí, Teresina, I think we say G. I think my family says G. So it varies a little bit. So when we talk about the Northeast, uh, we usually generalize, right? We talk, oh, the Northeast is, is, is a warm place, amazing beaches. But remember that it's a huge place, <laughs> so many states. So it, there, is a lot, there are a lot of variations there as well, especially in the, in the language. The accents changes a lot from one, one state to another. And also the, the pronunciation of the G varies a lot from one place to another. Uh, no Canadá tem muitos imigrantes portugueses, os pãozinhos deles se chamam Portuguese Buns. Ah, que legal! No sotaque deles. Isso existe no Brasil? Portuguese Buns? Um, I don't know. We have, the, uh, we have a lot of things from Portugal in Brazil, of course. A lot of food that we, we, we assimilated into Brazilian cuisine. And uh, we do have the French bread, pão francês. I'm not sure that it has anything to do with uh, France. And from Portuguese, we have we have some kind of breads that we call pão português. But I'm also I'm also not sure if it is really really Portuguese. Uh, I'm not sure how to answer your question, Tomek. I'm not sure if we have that in Brazil. But we do have a lot of uh, things from Portugal in Brazil. That's for sure. 
Muito bom, guys. Great questions, looking for more questions. You said, que máximo in your Theta video, what is the difference with ótimo? So this is just an expression, okay? So when you say, que máximo, it means, oh, that's great, that's amazing, that's awesome. So it's just a different way, the same way that we have in English, many different ways of saying the same thing, right? Oh, that's cool, that's amazing, that's awesome, that's great. Que máximo, you can translate que máximo in all of those different ways. Ótimo is a, is a more traditional word. So, que máximo is an expression, it's more informal, colloquial. Ótimo is a regular word. It means great, it means very good. Ótimo. Uh, quais são os outros tipos de café mais comuns que a gente pode pedir? So, guys, I'm, I'm going to ask you this, this question to everyone. What, are, what other kinds of coffees we, you could order in Brazil? How would you order coffee in a Brazilian bakery? or in a Brazilian restaurant, there are many t different kinds of coffee. Would you like to help me out? How, how would you answer this question? What is your favorite kind of coffee? I'm going to wait for your answer, guys. Muito bom. Looking for more questions. Pode explicar o que significa café coado? Claro. So, café coado. Uh, so, we have the word coador is the name of the object that is usually a fabric or a paper where you place the grounded coffee and then you throw, you throw hot water and then you have a drip coffee. So this is café coado, drip coffee. Okay, it's a coffee that passed, you prepared with the grounded coffee, ground coffee and then hot water and passes through a strainer, a paper or, or fabric strainer and then you have that drip coffee. In Brazil, we call that café coado, and the, the word coado comes from the verb coar, which is to strain, but we use that for uh, coffee and also many other kinds of foods, and it passes through this object that is called coador, which is usually paper or fabric. Uh, in your padaria video, you call it pão francês but it's also called pãozinho. So pãozinho is a, uh, a generic word. It means little bread. <laughs> uh, usually, if, you, if you're pointing out to the kind of bread that you want, you could just say pãozinho, but if you, uh, if you want to be specific, you should name the bread because there are many different kinds of bread, right, when you go to a Brazilian baker. There are many, many variations, many different ones, but the most common one is pão francês. You could call pãozinho. Pãozinho means, it means brand. It means a little brand. It's a kind, we, we Brazilians love to use the inho, inha, right? Which means little. <laughs> we do that very often. Um, yes, so que máximo is like how awesome. Yes, yes, yes. Um, tem padarias em Moçambique, Shannon? Padarias brasileiras? <laughs> Muito bom, gente. Looking for more questions. So, my friend from Sao Paulo told me de nada is pronounced de nada when you want to say casually but pronounced de nada. Mm. Oh, okay. I'm not sure I understand. So, it said de nada in de nada. I think that in Sao Paulo, the most common pronunciation is de. De nada. De nada. Uh, there are other ways that you could say when someone says thank you in Sao Paulo, you say obrigado. You could say, imagina, <laughs> this is very common in São Paulo, not other places in Brazil, but in São Paulo people say, imagina, like it means like imagine, you don't have to, you don't have to apologize, uh, you don't have to, you don't have to say thank you, imagina, so, but the most common answer is de nada, de nada, de nada. Okay. Looking for more questions, guys. If you have asked a question and I didn't see, you can just copy and paste because it's hard for me to read all your comments. Um, okay, guys. So what other... Oh, you guys did not answer the question about the, the coffee or maybe there is a delay. So I'm going to answer the question about the different kinds of coffee. So you have café preto. Café preto, I'm going to write in the comments so you guys can read it. Café preto, which means black coffee. We have café com leite, com leite, which means coffee with milk. 
But in São Paulo, this is in São Paulo because you know that that nomenclature varies from one place to another. In São Paulo, you could say uh, média com leite. Média com leite means coffee with milk. It usually is a medium mug. Uh, we have espresso, espresso, which is a small, just like American espresso. Uh, we also have one that is interesting. It's called pingado. Pingado, this is interesting, it's usually served in um, Brazilian bakeries and padarias. It comes in a cup, uh, in a glass cup, like this one, but a smaller one. And they add a, co a drip coffee and just a little bit of milk. <laughs> so it's called pingado, it's just like a little bit of milk. This is called pingado. And then we have, so in padarias you don't find any kind of... Um, fancy coffee but in brazil we also have those cafes which which are the coffee stores they are really nice and they have special coffees then you find things like macchiato and uh, mocha and cafe latte and all that okay but you don't find that in padarias <laughs> in padarias you find more the the more traditional brazilian coffees uh, so cafe allongé the, there would be cafe longo Longo, um café longo. Uh, o que é o café da manhã tradicional brasileiro? So this also varies a lot from one place to another. So when I was a child, a traditional Brazilian breakfast in my family was something very specific from that area, which is couscous. <laughs> couscous, it is like a savory cake made with corn. So we had couscous and we have coffee. And sometimes we had tapioca, but in that, in my city, they call it beju. So we either had couscous or beju and coffee. That was my traditional uh, breakfast when I was a child in, the, in Piauí, in the northeast. But I know that in the south, people eat, uh, in, a, in a very traditional breakfast, is bread, like fresh bread that you get in the bakery, always fresh bread. Uh, in Brazil, it, it is not very common to have those bread, those kind of bread that you buy in the supermarket and, that, and then you leave in the fridge for a week. <laughs> it is much more common to have fresh bread because there, it is so easy to find fresh bread in the bakery, right? So in, in the South, it is more common to have a fresh bread with uh, jam, so fruit jam and butter. Uh, so this is more common in the South. And it really varies from family to family because it is, um, we have so many immigrants and so many different cultures in Brazil. So the traditional Brazilian breakfast varies a little bit from one place to another. Uh, muito bom. Very good questions, guys. So I don't see any other questions. If you have asked a question and I don't see it, did not answer, just let me know. And before I finish the class, I just want to answer one question that I received via, that I received a lot of uh, emails from you asking about the uh, Brazilian Portuguese week. So this event, some people ask, oh, I cannot find the PDS from the last Brazilian Portuguese week. So this event I organize only once a year, every April. And uh, it lasts one week and I teach classes every day and I, I offer you a lot of material that you can use to study. Uh, so the PDFs from the last Brazilian weeks, they, I had two already, they are not available. They are only available for uh, two weeks and then I, 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 um, I, they are not available anymore. <laughs> So and the next, so the next Brazilian Portuguese week is going to happen in April. So add it to your calendar. The end of April, the last week of April, I'll be hosting this event. So I just wanted to let you know that. And my next classes, if you're looking for uh, to study Portuguese with me and join one of my courses, they are now closed for enrollment. But I will open a new class in May. So enroll, enrollment will be open in April. Uh, more or less in the same time of the Brazilian Portuguese week, and then the new, the new classes start in May. Okay, so if you're wondering about the Brazilian Portuguese week and about my next classes, the end of April, you can sign up for classes and you can join the Brazilian Portuguese week. Okay, guys? Uh, okay. okay. When do you use valeu and falou? So these both words are very, very informal. Okay, you don't use those words 
and with people i would not use that with people that you don't know unless it is in a very informal situation like you are on the beach and then you got you bought something on the beach you could say valeu so valeu is the same thing as obrigada it means thank you okay so you think you're thinking very informal way valeu falou is more like okay falou i think people also use falou to say bye falou bye I never use I never use that. <laughs> I never use falo valeu. I use very rarely, very very informal. Okay, so be careful with that. Don't use with people that you don't know or informal situations. It's too informal. So topa topa Jacob. It means to agree to do something. It it is also very informal. So you could say uh, quem quer. Uh, top. So you could say quem topa, you could also use to ask a question, like, quem topa, você topa ir ao cinema? It means, do you agree to go to the movies with me? Do you want to go to the movies with me? And then you can answer, topo, like I'm in, I'm in. It is very informal, it means I want, I agree to do that, I am in. It is very informal, we use it a lot with friends. Muito bom, very good questions, guys. So I made a video about this, Reggie, about where to order Brazilian books. I don't know any Brazilian bookstore in the US. I looked a lot. I don't think there is anything. So there you can find some books on Amazon and there are other two websites that I recommend. Look for my video on Brazilian, how to study Portuguese with Brazilian books. It's a new video I published two weeks ago. Look for it on my YouTube channel and then I have um, I give all the, t the tips and also the websites. You find the websites below the video, all the links, okay? Okay, guys. Okay, so I think that's it for today. I think I answered most of your questions. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll be here again next week. Just to clarify, I saw someone say, oh, why are you not speaking Portuguese? So in this channel, in this um, channel, there are people from all the levels. So that's why I speak English, because I want everyone to understand me, even the beginner students. Uh, but of course, this, this Q&A is useful for everyone, because if you have an advanced question, I'm also going to answer you. Uh, but I'll give you and I'll give you the examples in Portuguese. But if I speak only Portuguese, 90% of my followers would not be able to join me and to watch the class. Uh, so my classes in my school, uh, intermediate level, they are all 100% in Portuguese. But in this Q&A, I have to speak English because I, I want everyone to understand me. Okay? Um beijo, gente. Até semana que vem. Tchau, tchau.